Hey guys, Cookie here, and today I'm going to show you how to assemble a DIY cookie kit. Now, there isn't a whole lot of information out there about making them, and I figured, you know what, I've made them enough to show others how to make them. And I'm always getting messages from people asking specific questions about them, so I wanted to go in depth, because that's what I like to do. I like details. So let's get into it. First things first, the box. I love these boxes. They're cheap, they're plain, and it doesn't take much to gussy them up. These are actually pie boxes, and they're 9 by 9 by 2.5 inches, which is the absolute perfect size for your average sized cookie kit. They have a window on the top too, so they showcase your kit beautifully. If these aren't big enough for what you need, look up cake or bakery boxes and find something in your size. These boxes sometimes come in different colors and can come with or without windows in the top. I like to line my box with a little bit of fluff. It keeps the content safe, it adds a pop of color to an otherwise kind of drab looking box, and presentation is always important. This stuff is called sizzle, and it's made out of paper. It comes in all sorts of different colors. Tissue paper would also look really nice. It's always important to give your cookie decorator a little bit of direction. You don't need to go into a crazy amount of detail, but I'll give some sample directions below in the description. Add your logo or something pretty, give it your own little spin, print them, and cut them out. I cut mine so they are about a quarter of a page. Now, these things aren't absolutely necessary, but I found that customers really appreciate them. You could always add them as sort of an option too, kind of like when you go through drive through and they ask you if you want any ketchup or utensils. Some might say yes, some might say no. These polypropylene baggies have little white dots and are super cute for packaging. Pair them with some twist ties and your customer has their own packaging so that they can share their cookie creations with friends and family. People love packaging their own cookies. It makes the cookies feel a lot more special. I've added some wooden utensils as well. You can use coffee stir sticks, popsicle sticks, craft sticks, tongue depressors. They're all wooden sticks, just different sizes. I also found these adorable little spoons for the sprinkles, which, I mean, are totally unnecessary, but just look at them. They're so cute. Now for the sugar cookies themselves. And I've seen a lot of people who will individually package the cookies, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, since most people are just going to rip open the packages of cookies and decorate them all in one afternoon, which defeats the purpose of individually packaging them. If you do individually package the cookies, don't heat seal them. Just put them all in individual baggies and add a twist tie. That way the decorator can remove the cookie, decorate it, and then package them when they're dry. You can just skip adding baggies and twist ties. But honestly, I just like to stack the cookies and heat seal in one bag. It's a lot less work, and you can leave the individual packaging thing as an option. I packaged 8 cookies, which is a good average number. 6 seems to be too little, and 12 seems to be too many. I've determined 8 to be my magic number, so I'm kind of sticking with it. I'm using a 2 pound polypropylene bag which is 4 by 2 by 10 inches. And then I use my heat sealer at the number 5 setting to seal it. For the icing, I'm using royal icing. Some cookie decorators use buttercream, but this is all personal preference. Royal icing is what I personally use to decorate my own sugar cookies, so I want the customer to decorate with the same icing that I use. I know that a lot of people aren't really keen on the flavor of royal icing either, so that's why it's important to have a good tasting product. I mean, it's always important, but it's especially important in this case. I'm confident in the flavor of my cookies, and in my royal icing. 
I've found over the years while decorating cookies that there is definitely a looming misconception that sugar cookies taste bad. And some do, unfortunately. But prove people wrong. Splurge on some good flavorings and spend the time on perfecting your recipe so that it tastes good. Be that exception and surprise people. You definitely want to use a medium consistency icing, or what a lot of people call a 20 second icing, meaning that if you draw a line in the icing with your spoon, it should disappear after about 20 seconds. Because the decorator is going to be using it from everything to flooding to outlining and detailing. So it needs to be thin enough to spread out a little bit, but not thin enough that it's going to run off the cookie. It still needs to hold its shape. This can be kind of a tricky consistency to get, but with a little bit of practice it becomes a lot easier with time. Add a little bit of water at a time to get it to this consistency. My favorite disposable piping bags to use are by Truly Mad Plastics. They come in small, medium, and large. I'm using medium. If you do end up going with buttercream though, you'll definitely need to go with a more durable piping bag as these ones might be a little bit too thin. Buttercream is thick. In my kits, I offer three different colors of icing and I fill these piping bags between 70 and 80 grams full, which is around 2.5 ounces. Squeeze the icing to the tip and tie a knot in the top of the bag, but leave a little bit of room at the top. There's a really important reason for this. Your icing will separate after sitting. That's just gonna happen. And the decorator will need to be able to remix the icing by kneading the icing bag in their hand for about one to two minutes. If you tie the knot right above the icing, making the bag too tight, you can't knead the icing bag very easily without risking popping a hole in the bag from so much pressure. Leaving a little room at the top gives the icing some space to move. It doesn't look as pretty when the icing bag isn't as tight, but we'll fix that later. I could probably do a whole video on sprinkles. There are so many options and most cookie decorators are sprinkle hoarders, so this will be a good chance to use up some of your collection. I do three different sprinkles, about one tablespoon of each. I use these little two ounce portion containers, which are super handy because a lot of the time the decorator might have some left at the end, so this way they can just put the lid back on and save them for future baking projects. You could also use small resealable bags. Choose colors that go with your theme, but when in doubt, rainbow is always a favorite. You can buy sprinkle mixes, or you can just make your own, which is a lot less expensive. Some of the designer sprinkles can be pretty pricey for the quantity that you get. But if you have a lot of different types and colors, you can just make your own mixes. And I know I'm probably going to slaughter some of these words, but you can use Dregis, Nonpareils, which are those super tiny round sprinkles, Sanding Sugar, Rock Sugar, Sugar Pearls, Sixlets, which are like sugar pearls but with chocolate in the middle, jimmies, which are long sprinkles, and then you can think outside the sprinkle realm and use other candies and toppings like chocolate chips, marshmallows, small chewy candies, colored coconut, the list goes on. One of my favorite non-sprinkles are these little calibo crisp rolls, which are chocolate on the outside and crispy cereal on the inside. For the packaging, I've counted out 8 bags as well as 8 twist ties. Again, this is optional, but I find that a lot of customers really like to package and share their cookies. Then I've counted out 6 wooden sticks to use for the icing, as 2 kids seems to be the average for my kits, and I want to give them a stick for each color of icing, as well as a wooden spoon to share for the sprinkles. If you wanted, you could also include things like toothpicks as well. I'm taking all of these loose things and tucking them into the top bag so they're not moving around the box. If you're not including any packaging, you could always just tie the utensils together with some pretty butcher's twine or a twist tie, or just omit them if that's what you choose to do. 
To further personalize the packaging, I'm adding a sticker to the box with my logo on it. If you buy these in bulk, they're fairly inexpensive and they're a simple way to make your packaging look great and professional. You could even make your own or print some logos onto paper and stick them on with tape. Or you could simply use your business card in place of the sticker so that the customer can keep it. That works too. I'm using these cute stickers to fasten the box closed when I'm finished packaging. That way, they're not going to flop open when the customer picks them up. It's also that little sense of security too. There's always something a little more exciting about opening a sealed box. You could use plain tape, or you could also use some decorative washi tape. Now comes the fun part, assembling the box. It's like cookie kit Tetris. Tuck in your cookies, add your bags and utensils to the back, along with your instructions, add your sprinkles to the top, and back to what I said before about the icing bags, how we were going to fix them up and make them look a little bit more pretty. All you have to do is twist them so that the icing bag becomes tight and then tuck the top underneath. See how nice that looks? Assemble the icing bags top to bottom beside the cookies. And there we go. Close the box, add your sticker, fasten the box closed, and you've got your finished kit. When you compare cookie kits to actual cookie decorating, it probably doesn't feel as creative. But you can totally get creative with ideas when it comes to themes and sprinkle mixes. For example, this was a May garden themed kit and I included a watering can, tulip, and potted plant cookie, as well as some sprinkles in spring green and soft pastel colors. And yeah, there's some sprinkles in there that happen to be rainbow because kids love rainbow. I'll be sure to share some more ideas in the description below. And if you have any more theme ideas with some interesting cookie shapes and sprinkle mixes, share them in the comments. Thanks for watching guys, be sure to like me on Facebook and on Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to me here on YouTube for more videos in the future. My name's Cookie, and I'll talk to you next time.